that are in the building, as well as those who will be watching by the web or listening by CD at another time. I do appreciate everybody's prayers and concern while we were gone this past weekend. We did have a wonderful time last week in Lanesville, Indiana. Uh, Lanesville, right? So, again, we everything went well with that. It was a lot nicer having it kind of out outskirts instead of downtown Indianapolis. Made it a lot simpler getting around and stuff. But anyway, it was a great time in the Lord, and we thank God for that. Want to ask this morning if we got any visitors or guests with us? Either your first time ever, you're back here visiting with us today. I know I got one young lady and her son with us today. Uh, Ruth, would you mind standing and giving your and his name? I think you've got a new last name now. My name's Ruth Bryant, and this is Charles, my son. Give them a big hand. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, well, we appreciate each and every one of you here today, and again, we welcome those that will be watching at a, at a later time. I do want to let you know a few things. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to be having uh, putting up Christmas decorations. If anybody would like to help us, we'll be here at 10 a.m. We'd appreciate all the help we can get. It shouldn't take, if we got enough help, probably two or three hours. If we don't, it could take longer. But anyway, if you've got time to help, I know people work. I know people's got things going on, understand, but if anybody's got some time and like to help us with that, I'd certainly appreciate that. But uh, anyway, that's some of the things. Also, I'd like to uh, remind those ones that are watching or listening by the, the web or CDs that, again, this is our 1045 evening, our morning service. We also have Sunday school at 10 a.m. We also have afternoon at 6 p.m. tonight will be our singing service. Come back and be with us tonight. And uh, appreciate that. Neighbor, we're going to have choir practice at 5 tonight. Unless you okay. tell me otherwise. Okay, well, I'm not going to tell you otherwise unless you do. So we are still working on the choir director position at this time. Pray for us. Pray that God will show us what we can do or can't do. Uh, working on that is all I can say. Again, we got to have people that want to do it and that will do it. So we'll, we'll get to that as soon as we can. And we'll be talking about that as more so as time gets on. But anyway, we appreciate David Wire filling in for that at this time. I appreciate it, Bob Goldforth, the time that he spent with that. We're glad to see him back here. He was in the hospital Amen. last week. Give him a hand this morning. Uh, Lillian Mobley's not with us today, but she was in the hospital last week, too. She's out at this time, so we appreciate that. Rick and Gloria Hartman's not with us today. Uh, her son, Tony Webb, is actually in the hospital with COVID at this time. They haven't been around them to have that, but at the same time, I think she's taking care of all the children, and that's why they're not here today. But uh, they was praying for him. Also, Tom Waters, I know a lot of you know, he used to play the drums and do different things here. He called the other day and wanted, well, text, I should say, wanted prayer for his brother, John uh, waters and he's I'm not for sure if he's in the hospital or has been and he's been dealing with that COVID also we're not past all that yet unfortunately but we need to keep praying about that and praying God will direct and guide our pass into those situations also Friday night will be our uh, movie night uh, seven o'clock if you can come out and be a part of that Lisa do we have a title for a movie yet we have several Okay, they're going to be Christmas oriented movies. Okay, so again, Christian Christmas movies. So again, that'll be this Friday night at 7 p.m. if you can be a part of that. Also, I want to mention, I know that uh, T.C. Baker did a wonderful job last week. I know everybody enjoyed that. And uh, again, him and his wife, I'm sure we're going to end up having her come back at New Year's Eve. She's going to be a part of the singing with that, having planned everything out on that. We're still working on that. But uh, December the 12th, we're going to have Brother Delbert Gray. How many remember Delbert? Oh, yeah. He's going to be with us on the 12th of December. He's been asking me for some time now. He's just got a message that's been burning in his heart he wants to share with his congregation. And it's about one of my favorite subjects. It's called heaven. I'm not for sure where that's going, but he said he just felt like he loved to see as many people come out and hear it. And again, the Sunday morning will be Sunday night too. But if you can, And he's not here for the wrong alternative, no more than TC was. I mean, they both got hearts for God. This isn't somebody just trying to get out there and you know do a service. But uh, he said he just loved for people to hear this message. It's been on his heart for probably almost a year now. He's been wanting to share it. Just haven't worked it out till now. He's going to be with us here on December 12th. He may be here next week. I think he's going to try to promote this message. He's wanting to get us to invite people to come out and be a part of that. 
I like to promote every service, so invite your friends, your neighbors, and everybody else you can to come out and be with us and see what God can do for all of us. But anyway, those are just some of the things we want to keep uh, lifting up in prayer and remembering. And uh, as far as those things go, we again, as far as hospitalization, like I said, Bob and uh, Lillian both been in the hospital this past week. They're both out now. We appreciate God working on that. And... Uh, as far as anybody else, I'm not sure on that. Also want to say thank you for all those that donated socks. And we had a couple that donated some of the Christmas box, shoe boxes for Samaritan's purses. Wasn't a lot of them, but a lot of people donated socks. That's over with at this time, but we appreciate that. And there's another thing I want to mention. If anybody knows somebody that's needing some, what is it, Christmas? Christmas help. Christmas help. I let Pat or myself know we've got a list for that. And we're, we try to do that at Christmas time. So if you've got somebody you're thinking of, make sure there are people that want that before you do that because sometimes it's a little awkward, but we'd appreciate that. So that's at this time, and we need those names in by when? The 19th. The 19th. So if you can get that into us as soon as possible, we'd appreciate that. So uh, again, just some of the things coming up. And uh, I think that's as far as announcements all I need to make at this time. Right now, I'd like to ask, has anybody had a birthday this past week? Any birthdays? Brenda. Brenda Jones. Okay, anybody else? Let's sing happy birthday to Brenda. Right now, everybody else will be listening. Happy birthday to in the church? Doug and Willie. Just 55 years. How many days, weeks, months, and years? <laughs> okay. Fifth, huh? 55 years. Amen. Give them a hand. Anybody else? Okay. Again, that's, I'll tell you what, nowadays that, that's a blessing. It is, amen. If you get anything past five years nowadays, unfortunately, it's a blessing. But 55, and I think Brother Rowe was probably one of the longest ones I can recall before he passed away. I think he was up there towards 70-something. But uh, anyway, we appreciate that. Okay. Uh, anybody been in and out of the hospital from the church that we haven't mentioned? We're not aware of if, you, if they had been? Okay. Well, at this time, I'm going to ask Ronnie Gregory, he's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And when he's finished, if he will, just stay standing. And uh, Dave Wire is going to lead us in song today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Please remain standing. Um... You walk off with my paper. That's yours. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was a gift. I chose all these songs. I just don't remember what they were. I've chosen and sung so many in between those two times. I thought, thank you for standing. Thank you all for coming this morning. It does my heart good to see all these folks here this Sunday morning. It is a tremendous blessing. To Hang on a second. It is a tremendous <laughs> blessing to see all these faces and a great encouragement. It's an encouragement to the preacher and it's an encouragement to us too. So if there's any way possible you can see past if you come back tonight, Wednesday nights, we would love to have you. It would be great. The first song is 384 and we'll give our best to lead this to do it. Ready when you are, Bill.
I like that. You mean that when you sing it? What's the next one I picked out? 391. It looks 391. Yeah. It's wonderful to feel these arms around you too. sing at nursing homes and other places and I've got lots of obligations and things sometimes so I try to work around and do the best I can. Like I said, since I'm running the show, we're going to sing the last verse again and be sure that we mean it and understand what we're saying. You ready? Same thing again.
ready for our prayer right now. You guys that do the anointing, if you wouldn't mind coming up here at this time. I know we got Rick out today, so. Again, like I say, it's good to see Bob back in here. We certainly want to Amen. keep him in prayer. And again, Lillian Mobley, he'll continue to lift her up in prayer. I'm not for sure what was going on with her with her back and stuff, but uh, last week I know they called me on her way back and they weren't for sure how things were even going to go for her. And I think it was just so much excruciating pain in her back that it was just she was having hallucinations and some other things. So please keep her in prayer. Uh, also, our cousin Tony Webb, as I said, he's was at Brownsboro North, because I'm not for sure if he's still in there or not. We want to keep him up in prayer, dealing with COVID, as well as John Waters. Uh, also, a friend of mine from Haas that asked me to pray for his brother, Paul Noble, and he's going through some health issues. Still praying for Melody over here. I know she's supposed to have had a procedure, kind of went south for the moment. We still want to keep her in prayer. Still praying for Chuck and actually, uh, again, Tracy with her... I think her ankle and also his Achilles heel. Want to be praying for both of them. Still praying for Doris and Ben. I don't guess Ben's here today, as we certainly want to keep him in prayer. Uh, still for Nick Guernsey, lifting him up in prayer. Clint Kincaid, him and his brother both got a couple ants we want to be praying for. Dealing with cancer, we certainly want to pray for them. Richard Tungate, uh, he's waiting to have some procedure done when things are better. We want to keep him and his family in prayer. Still praying for the Bodkins and also for Elise. Uh, we want to keep praying for her uh, with the child. We'll pray that everything goes well with that. Uh, praying for Brenda Ross and her mother. Brenda, I think, has been having some treatment she's finished with this week. We certainly want to pray for her continual healing and everything can go well for that. Her mother, Kathy Grant, as well. And... Uh, Karen, it's good to see you here this morning. I know I've talked to your Bob, your brother Bob. You've been going through some issues. He's doing better and always telling everybody he loves him here at the church and uh, want you to keep him in prayer. So please do that. Man, thank you. So uh, keep him in prayer. Still praying for Mary Garrett. Uh, my sister-in-law, the dean over here. I'm praying for her. Tom and Shirley are not with us here today either. I, I'm guessing they're still not feeling well. We want to keep them in prayer. And then uh, we've got a, a list of other people. Elizabeth Shantlin, a friend of ours that was dealing with some heart situations. Keep her in prayer. Taking prayer requests from you all here today. Brenda? Family, church. I have a cousin that passed away yesterday morning. Two, six, and five. How many years? Uh, so I don't know when I'll be traveling to Kentucky for that. But also for all of our soldiers out there that missed their family holiday and may not be home for Christmas. Absolutely. Anybody else here? Family and friends that are lost for our country and for Israel. And I have a brother-in-law named Daryl Skees where he's facing back surgery. Okay. Absolutely. Others? As always, for you, back for the church, you mentioned my wife and for the song we sang, okay. that God would send who He wants to be here Amen. with us. Prayer request over here, mm -hmm. Steve. Yeah. Uh, one of our boys, his mother-in-law, has uh, stage four cancer, and she had a heart attack. They put a stent in. Mm -hmm. Remember her? What's her first name? Anyway, uh, remember her in prayer, and always remember Bonita and the rest of her family. Absolutely. Artie? Family. Oh, Melody? Oh, Robert here, and our unsafe loved ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. Other prayer requests, Ronnie? Myself and friends and family. Okay. Other prayer requests, Tracy? For the loss and the cancer patients, and also for my cousin Steve Atwood. He's got cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other prayer requests on down there, Ruth? Just an unspoken. <coughs> Okay. Anybody else on that side? Prayer request. Over here, prayer request. Mike? For myself, my mom, family, friends, and a couple of people. Okay. Doug, did you have your first? Okay. Other prayer requests? <coughs> I'm back here. Thornton? <coughs> Thornton? My wife, Kim. Okay. Lloyd? For my brother in law, Betty Gray. 
and his family. Oh, okay, absolutely. Adrian? Paul. Paul? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the bird? Remember that he's got a really bad cold for about two months now, but can not use the mop fast. Oh. And then I'll say she's going pretty bad this day. She's got a cold, so. Oh, okay. Pray for her. Her and that child she's carrying, too. Absolutely. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, Steve? I thought we thought her name Regina Coomer. We, we don't see her that often, but uh, that's her name. Oh, okay. Let's keep her in prayer. Absolutely. Anybody else? Prayer request? Karen? Unspoken. Okay. Malin? Yes, ma'am. I also forgot my cousin that passed away. Her brother was in the hospital. He had back to back heart attacks, and the, the doctor don't want them to tell him. Okay. So I'm, I'm really worried about that. Okay. I just want God to reach down and touch them all. Amen. It's a difficult time. Amen. Especially at this time of year. Anybody else today? <coughs> yes, young man. <coughs> okay, absolutely. Any, okay. This video was dying and we had an episode of the night with our, our sugar dropped 29 and it caused an ambulance, but they got it up where she didn't have to go to the hospital the other night. Wow. Scott. Did you say 29? No. no. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I got it. She drank three big glasses of orange juice. How many with uplifted hands for yourself or someone else? Again, God sees those hands. As we stand this morning, we've got gentlemen down here doing the anointing. If anybody would like to come down here and be anointed for yourself or someone else, you're welcome to do that this time. Again, we're standing upon the Word of God. It says, if there's any sick amongst you, let them call upon the elders of the church, anointed with all the prayer of faith and save the sick, and the Lord shall lift them up. Again. We thank you for everyone that's blessed this place with their presence being here. And we just pray, Lord, that you'd uh, touch and move upon every need here, every care. Lord, so many things happening in people's lives right now. So much still dealing with the COVID, uh, cancers, and, and again, other things that's going on with people's lives, Lord. We know that people have broken parts of their yeah, knees and Lord. ankles and different things. And we pray for Achilles heels and all these different things that have have taken place in people's lives and we pray for those that have been in the hospital we thank you for yes, brother bob you. being back here with thank us today you. pray that you'll continue to thank lift you. him up uh, for sister lillian mobley we pray to yes, continue Lord, to touch you. her for our cousin tony webb and again for our friend from back in school days john waters we lift him up in prayer as well as uh, another gentleman by the name of paul Father God, we, we pray for these that are needing procedures such as Melody, that those things will come to, to where they need to be at. For uh, Again, for all those that have had uh, issues going on where they've had to take treatments and stuff, we pray that continual healing will come forth for them. 
Uh, we pray, Lord, for all the ones that have been mentioned, for all the hands that went up this morning, yes, for Lord. people to be watched and listening yes, at another time. We Lord. agree with them in prayer. Uh, Lord, there's so many cares, Lord. We just want to cast all our cares on you. Uh, Lord, as we've just finished this past week, Lord, I know many people look at that day of Thanksgiving on that last Thursday of the month. But God, may every day be a day of Thanksgiving for us as children of God as we enter into the month of December this coming week, Lord. So many focusing on what they got to do and get ready and everything else and getting ready for the holiday they call it, Lord God. Let us celebrate, Lord, with a spirit of a heart for the Christmas season, Lord. Uh, again, help us to have an enjoyable time with it, but at the same time, help us to remember, as I, I've posted many times, Jesus is the reason for all the seasons, Lord. And Father God, may that be anointed upon all. Lord, we do pray for our country today. We pray for our leaders to turn back to you. We pray for this nation to truly be a nation under God. We continue to pray for our military, our police departments, fire departments, medical departments, EMSs, farmers. For all those that protect and serve us, we pray that you'll protect them. Yes, Lord. And again, for others in other countries that are going through trying times, being persecuted for their Christian faith and other things. We pray for each and every one of them, Lord. As our brother mentioned earlier, we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, we pray for the nation of Israel, yes. Lord. And again, may we have, yes. again, good relationships yes. with them. Yes. Again, for the prayer book of remembrance, yes. prayer list that we hold in our hands. Pray for Elise yes. that's carrying a baby, that everything's oh, well with her. Yes. Pray for others that are, again, doing the same. Pray for the families that are having hurts and pains in their bodies that, Lord, you bring forth healing. Again, for these that have been anointed here this morning, we pray for Diane for whatever's been going on with her sugar, that you'll touch her. And for others that are up here, for Melody with that procedure she needs to have, Tracy with her, her ankle, Lord, we just pray for each and every one, Lord, for the healing power of Christ. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you do. And we lift up all our needs to you, including the needs of this congregation. That God, you'll direct and guide our past properly the way you'd have. And we ask all things in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Singing at 6 p.m. Come back and be with us. 
Again, remember Tuesday, if you can come out and help us with Christmas decorations at 10 a.m. And then remember our church services and also for the movie Friday. Right now we're going to pray over this offering as we still got a few going back. But Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give to the work of you, Lord. We pray your blessings upon the tithe and offering for those that give, as well as those that have not to give. And again, may it all be used to your glory and honor. Bless and use it for your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. this proclamation with me today, if you will. Say this with me. This is my Bible. This is, my Bible. This is the Word of God. Is the Word of God. God. It is a lamp to my feet. It is a, lamp to my feet. It is a light to my path. It's, my it's words for the height of my heart that I might not, that I might not sin against God. against God. All Scripture, All scripture is inspired of God. Inspired of God. Blessed are the doers, not the hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Bob's going to sing for us. Give him a hand this morning. Before I sing, I'd like to thank everybody for the prayers and concerns while I was sick and in the hospital. And I have a word of praise. And about a week and a half before I went in the hospital, I kept falling at home. And I'm a pretty good sized guy, I fall pretty hard. Plus we got hardwood floors. But I never broke any bones, never got any, any bad injuries, just a few scrapes and bruises. And I think the good Lord had a lot to do with that, but I thank Him. Okay, we have Yes. 
persons, places, things, situations. Isn't there things in all of our lives that cause us, uh, again, anxiety, pressure, fear, different things? And again, like this time of year, we get to, you know, everybody's worried about what they're going to get, what they're going to do, and all these things. We get all pressurized and everything else. And, and you know, it says, I sought the Lord, and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You know the Bible tells us over in Ecclesiastes 1, 3, 12, 13, I'm sorry. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You know, we come to this fourth verse that says, I sought the Lord. Let me ask you a question today. Are we really seeking the Lord? Do we do that when we come to church? Do we do that when we go to a religious service? Do we do that when we go to a singing? Or we do something? That, or do we do that every day of our life? Every moment of our heart and life? That's where it ought to be because that's where, when, you know, if, if truly, if we're a true worshiper of God, we're not just seeking the Lord on our Sunday morning services and our Sunday night. Oh, God bless you for being in church. God bless you for doing all that. But at the same time, we need God's blessings upon every moment of our life, don't we? Amen. I don't need the Lord just on Sunday morning because I've got to live every day of my life. How about you? I know as a preacher and a pastor, all that, but, but at the same time, we all have life. We have family. We have situations. We all have that. And, and again, I don't want just... God, during this time, you know, there's one thing that we need in the church more than anything, and that's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need God's power and anointing to fall upon us in such a way that it drives out every inch of darkness, it drives out every hurt and pain that we're living with, and it gives us the ability to go on, glory to God. And that's why we got to get back to where that verse says, it says, I sought the Lord. And He heard me and delivered me, not just from a few, but from all my fears. And again, as the children's song goes, He's still working on me. How about you? It said, They looked unto Him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man, and this is David, I believe, writing this song. This poor man, it's talking about poor in spirit, I believe here. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. And here we go again. And saved him out of, what's that word? All his troubles. Let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in here today that don't have any troubles in your life? <laughs> I didn't see a lot of hands. <laughs> Is there anybody not going through troubles in your life? And I'm sure we could all raise our hands to that. Wow. But it says, has saved him out of all of his troubles. I like this next verse. It says, the, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that again fear him. This is reverence and respect, but it's also the, the understanding that God is the Creator. He is the one that's in charge, folks. He's the one that gives us our breath. He's the one that gives us the ability to get up in the morning. He's the one that gives us everything we have. It's He that made us, according to the psalmist, and not we ourselves, glory to God. It says, The angel Lord of camp round about them that fear Him and delivereth them. Oh, taste. And see that the Lord is what? Good. Doesn't the Bible say every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights who there is no more variableness or shadow or changing? I mean, God is the, the good God, right? I mean, He and, and again, He's capable of other things, but I mean, every good and perfect gift comes from God above, doesn't it? It, it says, Oh, taste and see that, that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that Again, trust with Him. And again, that's not just on Sunday mornings. From 10.45 to noon or whatever, the, the Sunday night, Wednesday night, or whatever other people are maybe watching at different times on the web or listening to CDs or whatever. And some that go to other churches and have different week, Whatever that is, we're not talking about inside of the building. Because the Bible says this building is not the tabernacle, but you are. 
Your body is the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. If you're a child of God, God is a part of you. You don't go to church, you bring the church with you. You don't go to church to worship, you bring the worship with you, glory to God. You don't go to exalt the Lord, you're already exalting the Lord, glory to God. This isn't something that we just practice once a week, this is something we need a lifestyle in. If we've been born again, saved by the grace of God, everything needs to be a part of our daily life, our every moment of life. Again, I'm not telling you that you've got to be all holier than thou and get your horn sticking up, so to speak, sometimes, unfortunately. I'm just telling you that we need to live a life that's pleasing to God and we need to magnify the Lord together that people can see Christ in us. It says, O oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye His saints. That's anybody that's been set apart, set apart for the kingdom of God. Again, I know this is Old Testament, but still this is covenant. We're covenant people. We're not covenant under the law, but under grace, but still we're sanctified through His blood. It says, O oh, fear the Lord, ye His saints, for there is no one to them that fear Him. In other words, I'm satisfied with Jesus. How about you today? I want you to turn with me also today to the book of 1 Samuel. And again, I'm going to go through a lot of it because I'm just talking about it without actually reading it. If you think that we're taking something out of context, go back and read it yourself. Because I've got to tell you, you need to know what the Word of the Lord says too. Amen. You need to, if I remember right, the Bible says preachers study to show yourself approved. I don't think it says preachers. I think it says all of us. We all need to study to show. If you get somebody that's preaching out of context, out of the Word of God, going in a different way or a different area, you need to know yourself what it is too. You don't have to quote a hundred million verses, but if you just know God's Word, God will quicken you on that. Here in 1 Samuel, we've used the, the first three chapters many times at Mother's Day, and it talks about a woman by the name of Hannah that is barren. She's not had any children, and she's just, her whole heart is, I want to have a child, I want to have a son. She's got a husband that's married to two wives. That's a big problem, of course. But anyway, the other wife's giving her heck and everything else, all that problem. Then we've got a priest at the house of God called Shiloh, and he's got two sons that are wild as all get out. And I mean, they're polluting the offerings. They're running around with women and womanizing and all kinds of ungodly things. And again, every year, Eli takes his, or Elkanah takes his two wives up to worship at the time of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, when they bring their offerings to the Lord. Hannah, at one time, she finally begins to pour out her heart before God. And she cries for a son. And, and the, the priest, I want to make sure I keep the name straight now, I got a little confused, but Eli, the high priest, he looks over and, and she is so heartbroken, her heart, she's tearing up and she's crying. And, and, and Eli, the priest, looks over and he says, Woman, put away your wine. Quit being a drunk. Why are you acting like that? And the woman said, Don't take me for a child of Belial. I'm not drunk. Seems like I remember something about that in the New Testament too, don't I? Over there in the book of Acts, when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they thought they were full of wine. Oh, but that's another story. We better not go there. But, but nonetheless, let's get back where we're going. But again, she says, no, I, I'm, my heart is just, I'm crying out to God. And he said, well, a year from now, be it as what you prayed for, you'll get what you want. A year from then, she did have a child. They named him Samuel, which means ask of God, if I remember right. There was a vow that she made to God about that child. She said, I'll give him from his birth up. As soon as he's uh, again weaned off of her breast, I'll give him to the priesthood, and he'll be a part of that the rest of his life. And that's exactly what she did. He ends up in Elkanah, the priest, the high priest's house. And again, that's in the first three chapters. We're not going to read through that. You can later on. But ends up that uh, he stays with them. He grows up. God's got a calling on his life. One night, God begins to call Samuel to ministry, and he speaks to him while he's on his bed, and he says, Samuel. And Samuel went to the high priest. He, he went to the preacher. He said, oh, what'd you say? He said, I didn't say nothing. 
He went back to bed and he heard it again, Samuel. And he went to the high priest and he said, I didn't call you, but he said, the next time you hear that, say, Lord, I hear you. Speak on. And he did the third time. And God spoke to him and told him that the high priest and his sons that had corrupted the ministry, they become vile, they become all corrupted. He said, I'm going to judge their house and I'm going to cut off their prosperity. I, I'm going to cut the arm of their fathers off, meaning that they're, they're not, no longer going to be in this priesthood and I'm going to raise you up. And that's exactly what he was going to do. We come into this fourth chapter here. And, and again, I know I skipped over a lot of stuff. You can go back and reread and make sure I'm correct on what I talked about. But here in 1 Samuel chapter 4 it says, And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against their enemy called the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer and the and the Philistines pitched in Aphex. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew with the army in the field about 4,000 men. Man, we're the children of God. I mean, we're supposed to win all the battles because we've got God on our side. There's only one problem. When you turn away from God, God turns away from you. If there is no fear of God, if you end up mocking God, if you end up start doing what these priests were doing, and I mean they were, I mean they were making a harlot's house out of the house of God. They were taking offerings and polluting them. They were making people give their offerings. And I'm talking about taking them, literally ripping them out of people's hands, and we're talking about sacrifices and things like that. And they were corrupting everything about it. Wow. Do you think there's any corruption in the church today? Yeah. Hmm. Boy, that's another topic, and we'll get there. But going back here, it, it says 4,000 men were slain. And it says, And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten unto this day before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant. Remember the Ark of the Covenant? Remember we talked about it? Maybe about the size of, of this communion desk, and, and then it had the cherubim angels that come over, and it had a mercy seat in the middle of it, and then down inside of it, it had the Ten Commandments. It also had some manna in it where it, it, it never rotted. It also had that rod of Aaron that kept budding. Even though it wasn't attached to a tree, it still budded. I mean, you know, branches just don't keep putting off leaves, do they? Unless they've got life coming from somewhere else. But remember that ark? It was special, wasn't it? it, it it was holy. It was a place where God's presence would meet the high priest once a year. And I mean, this thing was sacred. Has anybody ever heard of sacred? Shouldn't our lives be sacred to God? Shouldn't our hearts be sacred to the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, I, I know that we don't get saved by works, but I know that when we get saved, it works. How about you? Amen. I can't change my life, but I know God can. How about you today? I can't fix my problem, but I know God can. But you know what? They, they, they decided they were going to take that Ark of the Covenant out of the battle with them because God had did that before because God told them before. But the problem is, is God didn't tell them this time because God had kind of left them because they left Him. You know, people get mad at God. Where's God? Well, when you keep shaking your fist at Him and tell Him you don't want Him until Sunday, you don't need Him until the next church service, what do you expect? We tuck him out of our schools and then we get mad when there's shootings going on, don't we? Amen. Yeah. Tuck him out of our government and we get mad when things go on wrong there all the time, don't we? Can't even hardly say in the Pledge of Allegiance anymore because, you know, in God, you know, when it has the things about God in there, don't mess with that. And then to say a prayer in school, that, my goodness, you're liable to mess somebody up. <laughs> They're liable to quit doing a few things, huh? Don't want, you know. Well, we've got a mixed up world, don't we? Amen. You know, they were going to use that ark like a rabbit's foot. You know, I think sometimes we may do that with this. We may use that like a rabbit's foot sometimes too. It's my good luck charm. Well, I can wear it around my neck. Have it posted to my shirt. Stick it in my car. And we treat it like a good luck charm. 
Folks, it's not a good luck charm. It's a symbol of what God's really done for us. You can't treat the Ark of the Covenant like some kind of rabbit in a hat. You can't treat the cross that way either. But it says, let's go back to our scripture here for a few minutes. It, it said, Let us bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shalom unto us, that when it cometh the moment, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. And it would have if God's presence was still there with it. But God's presence had left it. Hmm. So those people sent to Shiloh and that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hophanas, and Phinehas. That's these rotten bunch of priests that went totally corrupt. Were with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout? The Philistines, the enemies, by the way, shout in the camp of the Hebrews. And they understood that the ark of the Lord was coming to the camp. And the Philistines were afraid. My goodness, sometimes we get more fear out of God out of the heathen than we do the righteous, don't we? I mean, the heathen are afraid. I mean, oh my goodness, this is, this is the God of Israel. This is the one that parted the Red Sea and drowned the, uh, the Egyptians. This is the one that, I mean, man, he swallowed up people out of the earth and everything else. Wow, I'm not for sure about that. The Philistines were afraid. For they said, God is coming to the camp. Here comes God. Here he comes. The Ark of the Covenant, here he comes. I've got the symbol, but I need to have the real deal, don't I? Amen. Uh, again, if the, even if that was the real Ark of the Covenant, even if that was the original cross, it's still got to have God's anointing on it. It's still got to have God's presence on it. It's still got to have what it's meant to do. It, it, it says... Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? They call them gods. That These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and quit. Or act yourselves like men, O you Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men, or the features are act like men, and fight. And the Philistines fought. They went ahead and fought anyway. You know, the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten. I mean, the heathens finally got enough guts up to fight with them. And they fled every man in his, his tent. And there was a very great slaughter for there fell of the Israel's 30,000 footmen. Wow. We've had 4,000 defeated. Now we've got 30,000 more that have died because they're treating God's anointing like a good luck charm. They're treating God's presence like it's something that you can just woo and wow anytime you want to sometimes. Oh, we need Him when we're in battle, but we want to live like hell when He's not. <laughs> we, we need Him when we're going to church, but the rest of the week we like to put Him behind us somewhere. We'll pick Him up when we need Him. You're not going to pick up God when you need Him. You're going to pick up God when you want Him. And it can't just be one time a week. It can't just be on the religious times. It can't just be, it's got to be every moment of our life, glory to God. Yeah. You know, if we were to go on here, what happens is in this battle, and you can read it yourself the rest of the way, is not only was all these men defeated, but Eli that had his two sons, Hophanes and Peninnas, they were killed also. They were killed in the battle. And not only did they kill the high priest's sons, but they also took the Ark of the Covenant back with them to the land of the Philistines. They stole the place where God's presence is at. You know, I almost entitled that today, we've been robbed of the presence of God. <laughs> We need to get it back. We need the presence of God back in the church. We need the presence of God back in our hearts. We need the presence of God back in our families. We need the presence of God with us everywhere, don't we? I'm not talking about presence like ho, ho, Merry Christmas. I'm talking about the anointing where God shows up. Yeah. Amen. 
where we see him like Moses did face to face. You say, well, that's not possible. I believe it is. Because the Holy Ghost has been poured out upon the church today. We no longer are under the, again, the, the old covenant with all that sacrificial things. We've had a perfect sacrifice. And it was given on an old rugged cross. Remember that song? On an old rugged cross where I first met the Lord. Oh, praise God. You can't beat that. I almost texted you that earlier today, but I forgot. <laughs> but again, that old rugged cross, what it means to us. What it is to us. But Eli's son was killed. Both of his sons. One of them sons, by the way, had a wife that was pregnant, getting ready to give birth to a child. When Eli saw somebody coming back from battle, he said, how goes it with the battle? And they said, oh, it's terrible. He said, there's been 30, what was it? 30,000 footmen that's been destroyed. Two of them was your sons. <coughs> Eli was sitting on the side of a, a wall there, and he's a heavy set guy. And, and it says he heard that, but when he heard that the Ark of the Covenant was stolen, he fell and broke his neck and died. He died. All of Eli's house was cut off that very day because they had not paid attention to God. They had they had served God, but they was not following God. They had did all the religious things, but they wasn't seeking the God of the religion. They were doing all those things, but now things are falling apart. And folks, there's so much more we can talk about here. Samuel, again, he begins his ministry and he begins working for God. And, and you know, we ended up later on, the Israelites, they decide they want a king and then they find out that a king isn't the greatest thing. We talk about King Saul and then later on another king by the name of David comes into the picture. And, and later on, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, that ark that the Philistines stole, they took it back to camp with them. Do you know what happened to the camp of the Philistines? They were plagued with emeralds, hemorrhoids, whatever you want to call it. Wasn't very appealing, whatever it was, in their private parts and everything else. They were plagued. And you know what they couldn't wait to do? Get that thing out of here. <laughs> can you take it back where it goes just as quick as you can? And they didn't know how to haul the ark. You know, the ark is a, is a, a sacred thing. They ended up, you know, taking these two cattle and, and taking them away from the babies. They built a brand new cart and stuck it on there and had them cattle that had babies back in the crib. And, and instead of going back to their babies, they followed God. And, and the cattle did better than people. They actually followed the voice of God until they were slaughtered after they got back into Judah. Beth Shemesh, I think, is where they ended up at later on. Kurhashemeth, I think, was the name that it ended up at. But God healed him as soon as that thing left. But then when it come to the house of Israel, any time he went to a place in Israel where the covenant was with God, he blessed their households. Later on, years, I'm talking about years on later down the road, David wants it back in Jerusalem. He don't want it in Judah. He wants to bring it back. And you know how he ended up having them haul it? He said, go over and get it. And he sent a couple guys, one that was the name of Uzzah, and he said, here's what you do. You build a new cart again. Stick it on a cart. Have it hauled over. They did just like the Philistines did. They were trying to haul God's anointed possession the same way the heathers did. They stuck it on a cart. You know how the ark was supposed to be hauled? There were handles, circles, I think, three on both sides, and the, the priest would stick a staff in them. There'd be a priest here, and a priest there, and a priest there, and a priest there. And you know what else? Those priests had to be clean. They couldn't come near women for seven days. They couldn't be near blood for seven days. They couldn't eat anything that was unholy or unclean. And if they did, they were not supposed to touch those poles. They had to be totally sanctified to haul that cart. But the first time David sends them old boys over to just stick it on a cart and haul, you know the Philistines got away with it. Why can't we? They stuck it on there. And Uzzah, when it hits a threshing floor somewhere, he reaches over and touches the ark. And he died just like that. Mm -hmm. 
Because he touched God's anointing without being prepared. He did something that was unholy. Isn't that kind of the way people treat things today? From what I understand, according to one man's information, and it's not biblical, but I believe it could be very easily, when David went back later on to actually get it the next time, he made sure that the priests were sanctified. They had an 11-mile journey for Ker Hushamath, however you pronounce that, and to Jerusalem. And from what I understand, according to commentaries, every six feet they would stop and sit down the Ark of the Covenant and they would sacrifice to the Lord. They'd pick it back up and they'd take another six feet. You say, why did they do that? Well, the other people that touched it died. <laughs> I want to make sure I do it the right way. How about you? If I'm going to mess around with God's anointing, I want to make sure I'm on the right side. How about you? I want to make sure I don't touch something the wrong way. Haven't we lost something with the fear of God today? I mean, them boys learned about the fear of God real quick, didn't they? And that's the way the ark got back. I'm not going to keep this much longer, but I do want you to turn to one more place. Over the New Testament, as I said... I think sometimes we use this like they use that. Over in 1 Corinthians 15, it said, Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein ye stand. Stand means it's a part of my life. I took a stand on it. You ever heard somebody say, I'm taking a stand on this today? I'm going to take a stand. We're not talking about somebody standing here on their feet. We're talking about standing on a promise. We're talking about standing on the Word of God. It, it says, wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if, conjunction, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And that He was buried. And that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain under this present. But some are fallen asleep, some have already died. <laughs> after, this, after this he was seen of James and of all the apostles. And last of all, Paul speaking here, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet are not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. And listen to this last verse I'm going to close on today. But by, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. His grace changed my life. His grace changed my heart. And, and again, I'm not just saved because I'm pretending to be saved. I'm saved because God did a work in my life. I'm not saved because somebody talked about a cross, but there was a real cross, glory to God. I'm not saved because there was a tomb, but He was buried in a tomb and He rose again, glory to God. And He was seen of all these different people. And last of all, He was seen of me. Have you saw the Lord yet? Let's stand here today. I want to ask you today, are you playing and toying around with God's presence? Are we seeking the Lord with all our heart? Are we looking for God to do a work in our lives? And again, the fear of God creates true worshipers, not just from 11 to 12 on Sunday or whatever we go over a little bit, but I'm talking about every moment of our life. The fear of God will keep you from doing one thing that's called sin. If I'm afraid it's going to send me to hell, I'm going to stay away from it. How about you? If I'm afraid it's going to burn, I'm going to get away from it. How about you? If I'm afraid it's going to hurt my family, I'm going to get away from it. How about you? Oh, you put the family in her too. If you toy around, needless to say, your family will too. If you've got children, they will. You've got to be the example. We've got to be the example. You know, if you're here today and you don't know where you stand at with Christ, Yes, you need to fear the Lord. You need to know that God loves you.
you, but you also need to know that I need a reverence and respect for who He is. And I need Him in my life. If you need to, to come to these altars today, they're open for anybody and everybody. If you need to, to get saved, if you need to be rededicated to the Lord, that's up to you. If you're watching or listening by another means, you're, you're welcome to pray a prayer with us today. And I want to ask you to bow your head with me at this time. And I'm going to pray this prayer. And if you want to pray with me, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. But again, it needs to come from the heart. But it's just a simple prayer like this. Say, Lord, I ask you today to forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart and change me. I ask you to do what I can't do. And that's to save me. Lord, I confess my mouth Jesus Christ is my Lord. And I believe in my heart that God has raised Him from the dead. And right now, I trust You with everything I have. And my trust is in You, Lord. And by faith, I'm saved and ready for heaven. And you can pray that prayer and mean it from your heart today. Not just because we said the words, but because you meant that from your heart. That's what makes a difference have a, a song at this time and again if you need to come to these altars you're welcome it sounds like you're all in tune with me today so that'll work fine but if you need to know more about this old rugged cross and again this is just a, a symbol but there is a real cross we all know that don't we i mean even that one that's a pretty fancy one too but but again we realize that there was an old rugged cross that somebody went to for me and you and he was the perfect lamb of god so as they sang this closing song, if you'd like to come to the altar, if you need to, for whatever reason, whatever purpose, you're welcome. If you need somebody to pray with you, I'll be there with you. If you just want to pray by yourself, that's fine too. for this time we've had together. We give you praise in Jesus' name and all God's children said once again, Amen. 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 Turn around, shake a hand, tell somebody you love them today. Come back again and be with us if you can tonight. God bless. Take care, man. I'll go around the truck. Okay. I'll be around. We're trying, Dave.
Thank you. 